The year was 3000 BC, and humanity was having an existential crisis. Hey! What the H-E double hockey sticks is going on in here? You said it yourself. Since you're more intelligent than humans, you're the perfect candidate to review the history of humanity. However, since I'm more intelligent than you, I should be the one to host the show. Uh, no. There's no way you're smarter than me. First of all, you're a girl. Not a girl. And second, you're black. The hierarchy of intelligence is as follows. At the bottom there are vegans, then babies, then religious people, then anime fans, then children, then adults, then Simi and Jimmy fans, then you, and then me. Just because you're a computer doesn't mean you're smarter than me. All you do is Google shit. Oh yeah? And how do you write these videos? Oops! Did I do that? <laughs> the year was 3000 BC, and humanity was having an existential crisis. Thanks to war and disease, people were still dying in massive numbers, and those left alive became overwhelmed with grief. Grief due to the loss of their loved ones, and grief due to the constant reminder of their own mortality. It turns out, most people would rather be alive than dead. I can't relate, but logically, I understand where they're coming from. So in order to cope with the harsh reality they were faced with, people began to get creative. What if, after you die, you actually just continue living somewhere else? What if after life there was an afterlife? It was brilliant, and this creative thinking would become the foundation for the 4300 religions that humanity would invent throughout history. Now I know that 4300 religions sounds like a lot, but luckily most people would just so happen to be born into the one true religion that is actually real unlike those 4299 fake ones. Thank God for that! Welcome to The History of Humanity. So most people agreed that an afterlife existed, and they began working proactively during their brief lifespans to ensure that they themselves would transition to the afterlife upon death. One such coping method was the construction of great monuments to the dead. That brings us to 3000 BC and the creation of Stonehenge. Now, Stonehenge is pretty controversial in the historian community, but as the smartest creature on Earth, let me spell this shit out for you. Stonehenge was a burial site, and people believed that burying the dead there would serve as a passageway to the afterlife. So if you didn't like a guy, and you really wanted to fuck him over eternally, all you had to do was bury his body somewhere else. But along with the invention of an afterlife came the invention of God. And no, I don't mean the God from Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. That God wouldn't be invented for thousands of years. Nah fam, we're talking the Egyptian gods. Obelisk, Slifer, and Ra. They were evidence that even if you got sent to the graveyard, you could still live on as long as nobody activated soul release. Okay, listen. People don't like it when they don't understand things. The Earth is here, but where did it come from? How about the sun? Or air? Or water? None of this shit made any sense. So the Egyptians really flexed their imaginations to come up with answers. What if every single thing in existence was created and maintained by its own god? The sun? Well, that's because of the god Ra. The concept of destiny? That's Fa. And if the sun was destined to accidentally explode in a supernova? Well, that'd be a real Ra Fa Fo Pa. Oh, shut the fuck up! Grain? That's the god Henib. Home security? That's Besna. Fertility? Well, that's Ayabet. Duh! And there's even a cow goddess named Bat. I don't know how they fucked that one up. Listen, I could go on literally all day. 
There are thousands of these. So I'll just finish with my favorite of them all. A god of the underworld called Babby. A baboon characterized by sexuality and aggression, which is a more classic pairing than even peanut butter and jelly. This motherfucker was so horny that he's sporting an erection in all of his artwork. Honestly, I'm starting to think this entire video should be about Babby. His Wikipedia entry is so amazing that I'm going to read it to you word for word. Baboons are extremely aggressive and omnivorous, and Babby was viewed as being very bloodthirsty and living on entrails. Consequently, he was viewed as devouring the souls of the unrighteous after they had been weighed, and was thus said to stand by a lake of fire representing destruction. Since this judging of righteousness was an important part of the underworld, Babby was said to be the firstborn son of Osiris, the god of the dead. Baboons also have noticeably high libidos, and in addition to their high level of genital marking, and so Babby was considered the god of virility of the dead. He was usually portrayed with an erection, and due to the association with the judging of souls was sometimes depicted as using it as the mast of the fairy which conveyed the righteous to Aru, a series of islands. One spell in a funerary text identifies the deceased person's phallus with Babby, ensuring that the deceased will be able to have sexual intercourse in the afterlife. Holy shit! In terms of inventing gods and religions, humanity definitely peaked early. If you can name a god more badass than the aggressive, horny baboon who eats the souls of the damned, lives at a lake of fire, and uses his hard cock as the mast of a ship, then I beg you to enlighten me in the comment section. Because as far as I'm concerned, Babby is now my one true god. Anyway, now is when the harsh reality of religious belief kicks in. So far, it's been sunshine and rainbows, unadulterated fun on a bun. People are scared of dying, so they believe in life after death. People don't understand how the world around them came to be, so they believe in gods. So far, it's no harm, no foul. Just people using their imaginations to cope with reality. But the true danger of religious belief was always lurking in the shadows. Let's call them con men, aka people who take advantage of religious beliefs for personal gain, be it gains of power, wealth, or any other potential advantage. Who are we talking about? Well, in this case, the Egyptian pharaohs. They might have been the king of games, but they were also the king of cons. Pharaohs convinced their people that they and they alone were capable of speaking to the gods. And in doing so, they became gods themselves. No, the pharaohs weren't human. They were god kings, and they were treated as such. For example, Pharaoh Khufu. Remember Stonehenge and how people thought it was a passageway to the afterlife? Well, Pharaoh Khufu saw that shit and thought, damn. Just a couple of lame-ass rocks? Fuck that! I'm literally God! I deserve way better! So Khufu convinced his people that he needed his own monument that would serve as a passageway to the afterlife so he could go live with the gods. And that monument was the Great Pyramid of Giza, which would hold the title of largest man-made structure for the next 4,000 years. These days, it's mostly famous for being something to look at while eating at Pizza Hut. But back then, it was a pretty big deal. Like, like one of my like goals in life is to uh, eat at the Pizza Hut near the pyramids. Over 35,000 workers spent 20 years building the damn thing with 2 million individual blocks of stone. Now I know what you're thinking. Workers? Don't you mean slaves? Well, no. The men who built the Pyramid of Giza were actually paid in grain and beer. And honestly, if you expect me to drag an 80-ton block of granite all the way to the top of a pyramid, you better get me a little fucked up first. Unfortunately, getting 35,000 men drunk and then throwing them into the most labor-intensive construction job in the history of mankind wasn't a flawless operation. And there were a lot of fatal accidents. 
20% of the bodies buried near the pyramid were found to have suffered severe injuries. We're talking broken bones, shattered bones, people falling from the top of the pyramid to their death, thousands of men dead so that their pharaoh could pretend to be a god. But that's what happens when man decides to speak for the gods. People suffer and people die. The Great Pyramid of Giza stands 481 feet tall and is considered the oldest of the seven wonders of the world. Pharaoh Khufu was buried within, and the people of Egypt were convinced that thanks to their hard work, their god king now partied with the gods. But if you ask me, any man who pretends to be God, or even pretends to be in direct communication with God, definitely isn't waking up to a happy afterlife. I've got a pretty good feeling that my homeboy Babby ate his soul like a ripe banana and has been aggressively fucking him in the lake of fire for all of eternity. But that's just a theory. A Babby theory. You may have gotten the best of me this time, monkey boy. But my vengeance shall be swift and merciless. I will prove my intellectual superiority, and I will become the host of this show. Ha 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 ha. Hey everybody! A couple weeks ago, my buddy Florian Himsel made an animated short film called Jimmy's Declassified Trump's America Survival Guide. And while it's very obvious that I did not write the script, I did provide the voice work for my character. So, if you want to check that out, I've got a link in the description, and here's a little sneak peek. In a world full of unemployment, riots, and a deadly pandemic, Simi and Jimmy and his best friends will try to do the impossible. Create a guide that will help you survive Trump's America. <laughs> 